Hi guys, Norman Sullivan from Higher Ground Lifestyle here. And today we're gonna start looking at the next project on the Suzuki. And that is to see what we can do about improving the sound system. The basic system that comes in the car is a little bit tinny. There are only small speakers in the front, no rear speakers at all. And uh, we're gonna see if we can improve on that to try and increase the quality of the sound and also the volume of the sound. Let's see how we get on. Okay, so what I'd like to do, just so that we have a reasonable comparison, is to listen to the sound system in the car as standard and then we'll see the impact of adding initially the upgraded front speakers and then in the next video the impact of additional rear speakers. For this test I'm going to use a USB stick as the driver for the music and uh, actually it's the first time I've ever used that in this car so that's quite interesting as well and we'll see how it goes and we'll try the system at different sound levels just so we've got a good comparison. miles per hour and with the stereo set at 10 on the volume control it's getting a bit quiet we're up to 15 on the stereo volume control and really and really what's happening is we're, we're beyond the comfortable level of the output of the stereo, really. I have to say, the sound quality isn't that bad, considering all we've got is two 10 centimeter speakers in the front. But it's an interesting bass line. I have to say, in terms of installation, a big shout out to John Phillips and the Big Jiminy Forum in the UK. The guys there have done a fantastic write-up on the fitting of both the front speakers and the rear speakers. And I have to say, that's far better than the instructions that are provided in the kit from Japan. So I've been following that and I would strongly advise you, if you're not a member of that forum, to get on there and join it. Have a look at the guys' instructions and it, it will make this process a lot easier. So this is the kit that we need to uh, upgrade the front speakers. Uh, I've got this directly from Suzuki UK. The part number is 990E078R32-000. Let's have a look and see what's in the box. Okay, in the box we've got a fairly comprehensive set of instructions. We've got some electrical adapters. We've got the plastic shrouds that are used to mount the speakers themselves. Two different types of self-adhesive foam. And some mounting screws. First thing we need to do is to remove the three screws that hold the door panel on. They're located one here, two and three. The next thing we need to do is to remove this trim panel which sits just above the door. It's held on apparently by a single white clip and the best way to remove it is by gently prising it from the top. I'm going to do that now. And that pops out no problems at all. I am, based on advice of a number of people in the forum, now using a decent set of uh, plastic trim removal tools, just so we don't damage the paintwork or indeed any of the plastic panels. But that panel pops off no problem at all. The Big Jiminy Forum guide tells me that the uh, panel itself is secured by 10 separate clips um, and that the best way to, to do that is to start removing them by, uh, by pulling from the bottom leading edge, that's the bottom front edge of the door and gently working our way around. Let's have a go. These trim removal tools definitely make life easier. I'm just working my way around popping the trim removal tool in and just gently prising away the door and it's coming away uh, very easily. Okay, so the technique that I find most useful is just to work my way around, get my hand up right into the middle at the, at the back and push the, the panel out from the middle and that's now left it hanging from the top and we should be able to just lift it off. And we can, and there's the panel removed and we'll just check to make sure that we haven't lost any clips in the process. What we're now going to do is to remove the standard fit speakers. Also need to remove the three white plastic clips that we're holding in the existing speakers. If you have a look at them in close up, effectively they work like, uh, like roll plugs. Next thing we're going to do is to fit these metal clips uh, onto the holes for mounting the new speaker. And they just slide on into place. Okay, I've come inside for the next bit of the operation, which is to apply some foam around the inner edge of the new speaker mount to insulate the speaker mount from the metal of the door, just as we saw in the one that we removed. 
We're going to use the thicker piece of foam that's supplied in the kit for this. And if you look at it closely, it actually splits into two down the middle. So we're going to use half and half for both sides. And there we have that closed cell foam now fitted to the inner mounting part of the speaker rings. I've done both of them at the same time. And we can now go and mount these into the holes in the car. So we can now secure uh, the new mount to the holes in the car using the three larger self-tapping screws that are supplied in the fitting kit. That's that ring now secured in place. I've been careful not to over tighten it for two reasons. One, we don't want to completely squash the, the closed cell foam flat such that it's not doing its job. And secondly, it's very, very easy with these metal clips to over tighten them and, and to thread the screws. So be careful when you're tightening those up. But it's nice and secure. And you can see effectively all that the, the kit has done. It's not really a speaker fitting kit, it's an adapter kit. It's given us a bigger hole for a slightly larger speaker and uh, a bit more space at the back. And that's the next thing I want to check, the space that's actually available because that is a key factor in choosing the speakers that you want to fit. So the speakers themselves have to be 13 centimeter speakers. That's 5.25 inches to fit in the hole. But there are another couple of dimensions that are critical and that's the depth that you have available for mounting the speaker and also the depth that you have external between here and the panel. So I want to just check those dimensions just now because I think that, that will help you to choose a speaker and it's something that I uh, hadn't seen before. Let's just do some measurements. Okay, so in terms of depth available, between the uh, strengthening bar there in the door and the front of the mount, it's just about exactly, I would say it's 59 millimeters. 59 millimeters dimension of course that's critical is the amount of space that's available between your speaker and the door panel Now that's a bit more difficult to measure I can only really measure that by showing the difference between this new mount and the mount that we've just taken out so this new mount before we fit the front foam on it sticks out about not about it's exactly 20 millimeters from the door panel if we compare that to the old mount will get uh, an understanding of the space available. So let me just have a look at this old mount. So if we measure between the inner, it's about 24 millimeters. So effectively, we've got uh, a bit more space available to us now as well. And one of the other things that I'd really like to do to improve sound quality is to use some sound deadening material in the door. I have to say, however, Given the amount of this door that is covered over, I think that's going to be extremely difficult. Uh, I think I will try and put some sound deadening immediately behind the speaker. I must be honest and say I don't know how much effect that's going to have uh, in, in isolation, but I really think I would struggle to put insulation in much of this door because so much of it's covered. The sound insulation material I've got is uh, fairly standard industry stuff. It's pretty heavy actually. Uh, and. Uh, Instructions in the box, essentially it's a self-adhesive uh, material that we're going to stick to the inside of the door and uh, let's see how we get on with that. Okay, so I have managed to get some sound deadening fill into the door panel there. I really don't know how much effect it's going to have. It's an awful uh, difficult job to do. Uh, the material itself is quite stiff and it's very, very sticky. It sticks to everything, but I have got it and I have managed to cover much of that inner panel, at least behind the speaker. So. Not sure if it's going to have any effect or not, but as I'd bought the material, I thought best to try and use as much as I can. So the speakers that I've decided to go with are a pretty standard speaker. They're a Pioneer speaker, 250 watt. I was going to go for something a bit more expensive and a bit cleverer, but to be frank, I don't think the sound quality in the Gemini is ever going to be that good. And I think it would be overkill to try and go for something too clever. So Pioneer speakers, Pioneer speakers are also the speakers that are fitted in the supplied Suzuki kit, although that's not available in the UK yet. We also know that they fit, which helps. I'm now going to prepare the speaker for mounting in the frame by using some of the lighter foam that's supplied in the kit, and we're going to use that just to put around the outside. Again, be careful, the foam comes uh, as a, a single piece, but you need to split it into to make sure that you've got enough to do the whole thing, just as I'm showing you there.
and that's that foam done around the speaker. It would be very easy to damage the speaker when you're doing that, so just be very careful that you don't put your thumb through the diaphragm. We can also now fit the electrical connector. These are uh, just a tight push fit, and if you're using Pioneer speakers, they will only go on one way. The larger connector goes to positive, smaller connector to negative. We can now reconnect the speaker in the car and locate it into the mounting shroud. The next job is to apply some of the thicker foam that's supplied in the kit around the edge of the speaker. And what we are trying to do here is to direct the sound through the cone and make sure that we don't get any leakage. The important thing here is not to stick it to the speaker cone itself, but to use the lip, and it's difficult to see, but to use the lip going around the edge of the speaker, stick it on there and pull it all the way around so that it forms a conical shape when we fit the door panel back on. There we are, I think that's broadly what we're trying to achieve, that conical shape of foam to direct sound through the door panel. Now check that that works before we refit the door panel. Okay, so I've tested the sound, it's definitely working. We can now reapply the door trim, which is the exact opposite of how we took it off. So we'll clip it in from the top, work our way around, secure it around the edges, and then we will uh, secure it in the middle and replace the screws. Okay, so that's the panel uh, trim replaced and the speaker is still working. And it's interesting. That's the new speaker on this side. Haven't fitted the new speaker on the other side yet. But there is a distinct improvement in the sound quality on the side where the new speaker's been fitted. So that's really good. Excellent, happy with that. Okay, time to dismantle the other door and do the other speaker. Okay, so we've got the panels back in. We've got both of the front speakers fitted. Let's do another run and see if we can see any discernible difference in the sound quality. So, same road, same speeds. Fifty miles per hour. Sixty miles per hour. Now, there's not a lot of additional volume, but there's definitely improved clarity. But I haven't increased the volume yet to the level twenty that we were at previously. So let me just come around this corner and we'll do that. Definitely much better. It's not only louder. I have to turn the volume down again. It's not only louder, it's also clearer. The sounds are coming through purer. There's definitely more at the low end. There's more bass, but there's more at the upper end as well. That is definitely a worthwhile improvement in sound quality. I'm happy with that.